it's not just planning, it's, it's creating the entire environment that we're going to use and the, and the entire way of working that we're going to use to get to this end point. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of A Real Agile or BS. I'm your host, Peter Sadikin at Agile Peter, and I'm with my favorite colleague on the web at Agile Bob, Bob Hartman from Agile for All. We love answering your frequently asked questions around Agile, and today we're going to be talking about release planning. Is it real Agile or BS? What do you say, Bob? Wow, this one is a, uh, I think I'm going to have to go with this this time. And I'm saying it's BS because of the way most companies do it. Mm. Most companies are trying to lock it down as tight as they can, as far in advance as they can. And it just goes perfectly against for responding to change or following a plan, right? It's right there over my shoulder. It's just not that way of doing things. So I think when they're doing release planning, they're going back to old habits and they're trying to lock down as much as possible. That's what I hear when I hear release planning. Now there are other ways to do it that are actually better and we can talk about those, but let's turn it over to you, Peter. What do you think? Wow. Well, I'm going to, I think based on the context you brought up, Bob, I, I would be in alignment with you. I think many companies that are transitioning to agile from a traditional worldview or a traditional, traditional framework of sorts, <clears throat> maybe waterfall would leverage release planning again as a mechanism for pre-planning, doing all the pre-work and pre-loading in a very uh, waterfall fashion. However, however, I think even though release planning is not part of the core dogma and doctrine of the scrum guide, all right, because Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland said it's just sprint planning. You get in and you start building. Uh, however, in my experience, I believe that if trained appropriately and trained correctly, release planning is certainly agile. And let me give you the three things that I, I talk about. The first thing about release planning that I think is absolutely important is it allows us to have a lean concept emerge, which is seeing the whole. Whenever I do release planning or train release planning, it's an opportunity for us to see a story map of everything that's going on with this product backlog and this project. This allows us, number two, to have transparency to the overall organization that, hey, we've taken your requirements maybe, we've broken it down into user stories, now we have a release plan map of the entire thing that we can see. And now, because we have, we can see the whole, we have transparency to it. Number three, we can have powerful conversations around the complexity of the work and where it, where it lies. And so what is fascinating to me, and, and I always love these, having these conversations with clients, is after we've done release planning, we have a story map of all the stories laid out. And often these stories are bucketed into complexity buckets, like a one, two, four, eight, or 16 we can immediately go to leadership and management and say, hey, this is what we see in this project. Maybe it's more weighted towards complexity. If it's more weighted towards complexity, then maybe that deadline that you had and the scope that you want might not be reasonable. And this is a powerful, powerful way to allow management to reveal to themselves that, hey, Maybe the deadline's too aggressive. Maybe the scope that we want needs to be negotiated a little bit. Maybe we need to talk about what we can't have in this project. And so if trained correctly, in, in a nutshell, I believe that uh, release planning is agile as long as it in, in improves transparency, engagement, and an understanding of seeing the whole. So throwing it back to you. You know, I think you said the important thing, if trained properly and if implemented properly. I think those are important things. I, I like the transparency piece. I think we have to be care careful of running into the same problem, which is having too much planning done up front. Mm -hmm. And so the concept of a story map is good, but, but let me tell you one of the, a horror story that happened a few years ago. Uh, a company was trained correctly, theoretically, by another company who shall remain nameless at this point. And one of the things that they had a handout from this company that said, here's how you do release planning and it laid it all out. And one of the things they said very specifically was for release planning, you need every user story you're going to have in this product ready. 
Uh, I'm like, that could be thousands, right? I mean, it's just ridiculous. So, um, so I think we have to be careful around too much planning there. I do like the, the, the having conversations thing. Is this a date-driven release? Is this a scope-driven release? Which is gonna be more important? Who's driving? Who's, who's actually the product owner and who are the stakeholders? Let's figure all that stuff out. Those are real important. And I, I just wish we had a different name other than release planning because that's mm -hmm. a name we've stolen from prior generations. Right. What, it, it, to me, it's, it's not just planning. It's, it's creating the entire environment that we're going to use and the, and the entire way of working that we're going to use to get to this end point. So I wish there was a better phrase for it. I'm going to have to give that some thought, but it's it, calling it release planning, I think brings up the wrong connotation for people, which is why I said it was, was BS. I think it can be useful in certain situations. Again, a lot of things we've talked about are good training wheels for companies good training wheels here, you know, let's do a little bit of a little bit of release planning is the way I like to say it. Hmm. We don't want to get, I, I tell people all the time, if you know enough to get started, that's great. If you know enough to finish, you've done too much planning. Ah. Right. So, you know, it's just, I, I think, I think there's a happy medium in between that could be very agile, but the way we word it today just doesn't work for me. And I, and, and I would, I would agree with you. Here's a question that I have that sometimes is posited by my students is should you release plan on every project? Because sometimes people see release planning as something that you would only do on a large, complex, multi, you know, multi-team endeavor. And so would you do release plan? I, and I know we're kind of, we're, we're fighting this word right now um, as, we're, as we're talking about it, but would you suggest doing release planning for any size project, Bob? Or would it be one of those things that needs to be leveraged only for complex projects with multiple teams? That's a really good question. It's, um, I can see both sides of that one. I like teams to build habits. So I would probably err on the side of doing it for everything, but I would like to have a template of what it is we're doing. And maybe some parts of that template we do very quickly in a small project and some parts of that template take a longer time in a bigger project. Um, but I like them to have kind of that checklist to make sure they're ready to get going. And so and the important questions for me, really important one, What's more important, date or scope? Because I'm going to flex the other one to meet whatever is important. So that's a question number one. Number two, who is the actual product owner and who are the stakeholders? And number three, how much leverage do we have as a development team? If, if I know the answers to those three questions, I probably can get started on almost anything. But a larger project would have a more complex set of questions that we probably also have to answer. For sure. One, one way that I have summarized release planning for clients in the past is that release planning is really an opportunity for organizational alignment. Sometimes during release planning, we'll create working agreements or norms of sorts to establish, again, who is our product owner? Who's the scrum master? What's the team? How are we going to deal with distance, conflict? How are we going to deal with bugs? How, right? And so it's an opportunity for everyone to not only see the whole, but align around the intent purpose of this build for this for this project and so I always have seen release planning as an organizational opportunity to ensure that everyone that is partaking in this project work or product work is aligned to what the team is actually doing and so if we leave it kind of at that high level I think it's a great thing whether it's a small team medium size or a complex project to do because we want as many people as possible in many cases to be involved in the process of work. I think this falls into this whole idea of management's up here, the teams do the work and the management just shows up whenever they want. In Agile, we're asking for more engagement, more understanding, more transparency, and more alignment around the business and the IT. So I've always seen release planning as an opportunity to align those two business units, business and IT, to ensure that everyone's on the same page. That'll be my final word here. Any final words from you, Bob? I like that alignment word, Peter. I think that um, I might try to use it in some way. Like maybe it's not release planning, but it's release alignment. Ooh. And I think that release planning starts to get people thinking of being bullied into doing stuff. But if it's alignment, now it sounds more like it's a discussion where there's a back and forth. Are we aligned between management and the team and between the product owner and the team? So I like that. I, I don't know if it's what I, what's going to stick, but I'm going to think about something around release alignment going forward. So thank you for that. And uh, great topic. I like this one. This is a good one. Well, thank you guys for joining us in this episode of Real Agile or BS. When it comes to release planning, it's highly contextual relative to your company. And if you need help, 
Agile Bob, at Agile Bob, and myself. You can find us on Twitter, at Agile Peter. Uh, let us know. Let us know if you have any questions or we can help you with release planning. Uh, thanks again, again. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Subscribe, smash the like button, and we'll see you guys next time.